Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse, and I want to talk a little bit about why our scientific calculator has a QR code, but our graphing calculators do not have a QR code. So first off, what's a QR code? A QR code is a code that is generated, and usually you see a little kind of square with a bunch of uh, divvy lines and stuff, and you can use an app to read the code and it will open up a visualization or if it's like in the art, you know, if you're in a museum, they use QR codes and you hear a little bit of a little audio about the, the piece of art you're looking at. So a QR code is a way that connects you to something on the internet, an audio, a visual. So for the calculator, we have a QR code on our class whiz, our FX991CE, and it is a scientific calculator, relatively inexpensive, under $20 very powerful calculator and because it's a scientific calculator it's a you know it's a small calculator it doesn't have a huge memory and stuff it can do a lot of things it can work all the way through high school but if you want to actually see let's say you're graphing functions or you've plotted a table of values you don't get to graph it because it's not a graphing calculator you might have to graph by hand or uh, use software or something attached to that but on the calculator itself you can't see the graph because it's a scientific calculator but with the addition of this QR code, so if you look down here on the calculator, you see above option, this in yellow QR, that means we can actually generate, you can enter data, whether you enter it as a function, polynomial, or as a um, table of values in a spreadsheet, and you want to say, make a histogram or a circle graph, you can now do that, you can see the visualization of the data that you have entered numerically, by choosing QR code after you've entered your data. And this will create a QR code that you can read with an app. Or if you're using an emulator like I am, you can click the QR code and it immediately takes you to the visualization of that data, of that information you entered. So now this powerful tool of a QR on a scientific calculator that's under $20 lets you see and, and manipulate a graph. Um, so how is that different than the graphing calculator? Well, if you have a graphing calculator, you have lots of options, right? So I'm going to be able to graph it and visually see it. I'm going to be able to find intersections. All these things I can do with a graphing calculator that I can't do with a normal scientific calculator. I can enter things in a table and see the table of values, but I can also see the visualization all right there on my graphing calculator. So I don't need that QR code, especially if I have a handheld, it's right there in front of me. I don't need to go somewhere else to see the visualization. If I'm a teacher and I'm using the emulator of the graphing calculator, again, I can show the graph right there on the emulator, right? So I don't need the QR code. So we have QR codes only in our scientific calculator, the, the class whiz, because it's an added feature. It's allowing the scientific calculator to become a graphing tool as well. So that's the advantage. So let's just show you what I mean. So here we are on a graphing calculator and I want to graph two functions, let's say. So I would probably most likely go down to the graph menu, hit execute, enter in my functions. So let's do that here. So I've got three X squared minus two X minus four. That's my first function. It's going to hit execute. And then I'm going to enter my second function, negative two x squared plus x uh, plus 2, right? So I'm going to hit execute to set that, and then I can hit draw, and boom, there is a graph of my calculator, of, of my functions, not my calculator. And if I wanted to see a table of values, I could go to the table menu real quick. It takes two seconds, and look at the table of values. And I have set up my table to go by 0.5, and so I could kind of go through the table of values. I, I only went from positive 5 to negative 5. I could change that if I wanted to. But on the graphing calculator, you have the table. The minute you enter those functions, you actually have quite a few things. You have the table that you want to look at, or you have the visualization right there, all in the calculator, and you can see both. And you can go in and find, you know, your intersections, those types of things. I can do the same thing now because of the QR code with the class was with this this scientific calculator. Now how I enter is a little different because it's not a graphing calculator. So I wouldn't enter it as a graph as I did with the graphing calculator. I would enter it into my um, table, right, where it's going to ask me for the function. So it's going to create a table of values based on the functions I enter. So let's choose that. So my first function is, um, we'll enter the exact same one. So 3x 
squared minus 2x minus 4. So there's our first function. And again, as in all of the Casios, if you hit the equal or the execute, you are going to set that function or that value that we've just entered. So now I want negative 2x squared plus x plus 2. All right. So this is how I'd have to do it on the, on the um, scientific calculator. right? So I entered the two functions. And it now asks me, where do you want to start your table of values? Um, and so I'm going to choose the negative 5. So I'm going to choose, let's start at negative 5 and positive 5. So I'm going to set that. And it's asking me, oh, I only set by 1. So let me go back. Um, let's go back over. Oh, I had to set them up again. I want to actually make this be 0.5. Now, I don't know why, but my, my emulator is in a different language, a European language. I, I feel like, I don't think it's German. I'm not quite sure which one it is. But I know that in Europe, they use the comma instead of 0.5. They use comma 5 to represent the decimal point. So this is why I'm choosing that. So I want this to be 0.5. So now let's hit execute. And now you'll see that my table is going up by increments of 0.5. Um, so there it is. And so let, we can go back on the, uh, let's get back to the table of values over here on the graphing calculator. And you'll see that we have the same, you know, same values here. So I get the same thing, except I have no visualization on this scientific calculator. But because of the QR code, I can now actually see the graph by hitting this. So it's a, it's a yellow, so I'm going to hit Shift, QR. And notice I'm in the emulator now. It creates this little QR button. If I wasn't in the emulator, this would show up on my calculator, and I, I could use the uh, QR code reading app and actually get to the graph. But since we're on a computer already, we're going to use just click, and this takes me immediately, you'll see, to the graph of that data. So here is the graph of that data. So notice it, it kind of sets an automatic um, window here so maybe I want to change the window but here's my functions that were entered into my scientific calculator I can change the settings of this so now I have created a visual representation from just a scientific calculator that I can now uh, change so notice it has my uh, table values for the X but I can now make this look a little bit more like what we saw in the graphing calculator so let's make our, our Y min also be uh, let's make it be negative 5 and our y max be positive 5. And now let's redraw this and it'll, it'll just look a little different now. So there it looks a lot more like what we saw when we were in the, uh, the calculator. So there, let's go back to the graphing calculator and look at the graph on the graphing calculator. So you'll see they're very similar now, right? So this is... No QR code needed on a graphing calculator because you have all of that right at your fingertips. But if you now have a scientific calculator like the FX991, this QR code adds an extra ability to visually see your data and you can manipulate your data. So it's exciting. You can then print this out. So this makes it uh, very advantageous for this um, This scientific calculator now basically has graphing capabilities is what because of the QR code. So that's the difference that answers the question of, you know, why don't you have one on your uh, graphing calculator? Well, you don't need the QR code because you already have that visualization available to you.